takes a few seconds, doesn't it? Hi, can you see me? Hello. I think it's going to be a really lovely day here today and I understand it's beautiful in the UK too. So I don't know if you can hear us. I know we're a little bit early, but we thought we'd start a little bit early just to see that technology is working. Hi, Paul. I hope it's all looking okay. Um, so today we're um, going to be doing some rust effect, patina effect, moss effect. So lots of different things. I don't know what you've all been up to. Um, I hope you can um, join us and go through some techniques. Um, I'm just, uh, we're, like I said, I'm just starting a little bit earlier because we are uh, making sure our technology is working. So what are we doing today? So I'm just gonna be just showing you this so that if anybody who hasn't seen what we're doing today, can actually see. So today what we're doing is this beautiful uh, bird cage. And the bird cage is all rust, patinas, moss effect, very, very um, simple, but very, very effective. So I've got Pip here as well. So she is with me. She's, I don't know what she's doing. She's destroying the place as usual. Um, <laughs> she's, not, she's not caught in the wires. Um, and she's going to be doing some techniques for you next Tuesday. Um, so I just wanted to share those with you as well. So for anybody who wants to join us next Tuesday, you know what's coming up. Yeah, hi everybody. I hope everybody's doing good. Like Jali said, it's a gorgeous day here. We've had a few gorgeous days. It got a little bit thundery, I think, on Sunday. Yeah, we, right. we have the May long weekend here. So I hope everybody had a good uh, long weekend. So many boats out on the lake. Uh, the beaches look packed. A little bit scary, but, um, you know, orders are slowly getting lifted. Um, so yeah, we're a little bit early because we wanted to avoid any technical difficulty and then uh, nobody can ever find us. I've already <laughs> shared the link on my Facebook, Brilliant. so you guys can go on that. I'll be doing comments today and Dali's going to be creating this. Oh my goodness, such a scrumptious scrumptious. I know she's shown you, but oh, look at that. Yeah, Pip's a bit better at showing it. <laughs> I like show. I like this show and tell. I should be on the price is right. Uh, the art is right. <laughs> but isn't that the cutest little thing and I guess you, this you can just tighten and then you can hang um, yeah or if you don't want to have that element you don't have yeah. to and then so Dali's gonna do, yeah so this is what it started out like so Dali's got a different slightly version here we thought we'd do two different versions uh, for those of you who got the kits you got to pick which ones you wanted because you were ahead of the game um, I think we've got a couple of kits left that's it yeah. The patina and uh, maybe the rust. That's um, right. So if you want to watch this and do this later, let me know what you got and I can definitely deliver and drop it off. So like I said, I'm going to do the comments, but I just wanted to um, let you know we're switching it up next week. Um, we are going to be playing with alcohol ink next week so I just want to show you a couple of cards that I made they're very little just note cards I've got bigger versions of them um, the, the class next week is going to be kind of a little bit more technique driven of how I come about to get this kind of look and different ways to make alcohol ink look uh, slightly more mixed media opposed to just over the whole sheet and um, I'm also going to be showing you that you don't need to use UPO paper. Dali has given me this amazing paper that she brought with her and I've got quite a bit of it so um, it's almost like a cardstock it's not quite glossy it's almost like a poster board, if you will. Anyway, um, the Pentar alcohol links, as you know, um, have a longer life in the sense that they don't dry so fast. So these techniques are perfect for it. You don't have to worry about it drying and getting those dark circles you normally do with alcohol ink. Anyway, without further ado, so I'm going to be showing you how to make this uh, beautiful alcohol ink card. I think you can see that. Uh, and this is just using three colors. This was, I think, magenta. Apple green and lemon. Mm, no, so yummy, yummy. So summery. Now, this is um, using the apple green and just brown. And I'm going to be showing you how you can get that effect where it looks like it's distressed. 
and this is also the um, apple green with the lemon and magenta but as you can see this one's kind of got like a gold wax paste over it and it's quite muted so you can go from super shiny to a very muted look using the same colors and I'll be teaching you how to do that too um, we'll do a little bit talking about how you can do some die cuts in alcohol ink to enhance your cards further and then this one is just straight alcohol right onto the card. See how shiny that is, hey, Dali? Yeah, Look that's at that. That's beautiful. Um, that's what I love about like the vibrancy. Yeah, the vibrancy. That's what I love about the Pentar inks. They don't lose their vibrancy. And last but not least, just um, basically using one color and uh, using the glitter on it. I don't know if you can see it in here, but there's um, little yeah, shimmers of glitter in there, and that's using the rainbow alcohol oh, to give you favorite. that glimmer. It's your favorite, is it? But that's it, very simple alcohol ink cards that you can use, um, and that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna change it a little bit next week. We've gone from totally rust patina effect that Dali's doing, all the hard stuff and I'm gonna go do the easy stuff next week okay easy. guys I'm gonna go watch your comments now and we're gonna let Dalvinda here take over Ooh. and do her magic uh, leave lots of comments and I will keep answering them hi Els hi Paul hey I just saw your comments okay <laughs> bye <laughs> so for anybody who's just joined I think is it is it 10 is it 10 is it 10 it yeah exactly dead 10. on 10 Yay. so for anybody who's just joined us this is what we're doing today so i'm going to be decorating this beautiful bird cage whoops where's my little thanks gone so this can be used as like a, a notebook board or you can just take off the the string um i know we've um, sold quite a few of these kits um so anybody who's bought it can actually craft along with me and anybody who's um looking at purchasing it we have a few kits left so i know in the uk we definitely have the rust effect the patina effect and the moss effect that i'm going to be using today so paul would be happy to help you there so let's get started so the the um bird cage comes to us as a what i call like a, a good three millimeter if not more mdf so you've got that there and all I'm going to do is, is to get us started, I'm just going to remove from the back, it's just a knot, I'm just going to remove the pegs out so that we've got that separate. So that's all I'm doing. So mine's slightly a square shape. And the products I'm going to be using to create the rust effect, then the patina and some moss effect are the following. So let me just show you. So what we get is we get the rust effect, which comes in this beautiful packaging from Pentart. And what you get is you get the four different colors to create the rust effect. And then you get a 3D powder to create that sort of rugged texture. With the patina effect, what we get is we get much more of a sort of what I call like a, a aqua copper sort of gold colors. So what I'll do is I will show you all these colors as we work through it. And again, that's a set of five. And that comes with a beautiful gold. And then finally, what I did was I used the moss effect. Moss effects, absolutely beautiful. I absolutely love it. Great for Christmas, great for spring, great for creating textures absolutely beautiful and with these three you also get what i call a velvet powder which is actually so beautiful when you create the effects with it so it's a set of three yes yeah, a set of three and then the velvet powder or you can buy obviously each item separately if you wanted to but for today i'm going to sh just showing you on this bird cage how to use all three sets so you don't need to use all three you could just use one element of it you could combine them they're all water based so you can use whatever you want to so what what i'm going to do is i'm going to just get started so what i'm doing is I'm just going to take my computer and get started so i hope you can see this there we go so i can have it a little bit higher i think so what i'm going to start off with is i'm going to actually what i've done is i just take a little plate and one of the techniques that Pips also showed me is, is really, I found really useful, and we all use it, is that we have this really lovely um, blunt brush. So just take one of your old brushes, and if you, you want to create this effect, just cut it down. 
And so what this does is it allows you to create that stippled texture effect. We found this very, very useful. Um, and I know we've all got these brushes <laughs> because we leave glue on them, etc. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with the rust effect. Now with the rust effect, like I mentioned to you, you get four colours. Okay, now everybody does this differently. Um, and I'm just going to show you the way I like to do it. And it is about building on colour on colour. Now, if you want to create even more texture, you can actually texture all of this with like a modelling paste or a texture paste. Um, there's, a, there's a heavy modelling paste, not the light, but the modelling paste. Or you can use a bead paste. Um, so there's lots of different pastes that you can use to create texture on the background if you wanted to use texture. So these are the rust effects. So you've got like a dark brown, a sort of a, a rustic brown, and more of an orange tinge, and then this sort of mustard colour, plus the 3D powder. But before we get started on that, we have to do the prep. Now the prep for this is very simple. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you, this is the black primer that all the gesso, absolutely beautiful to work with because it is extremely, extremely thick. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to take that and it doesn't matter if you miss bits. It really doesn't matter on this on this because what we're going to do is, is we're just going to create definition. So I'm going to just show you this. This is this is essential if you want to create the effect that I want to create because you will not get that darkness that you're looking for, that grunginess, unless you do this. Now I can show you by leaving the bottom bit white just to show you the differences that you get and then I can always paint over that to create another effect so all I'm doing is I'm just going in with a brush taking this and just painting it so because this is a really nice uh, gesso I'm using quite a hard brush as well so and then I'm getting this really lovely effect so let me just carry on with that and you're going to do this all over it. Obviously, at home, take your time. But I quite like the fact, I know everybody always says, oh, you must do it all black. You know, you must have it all, like, um, covered. Well, to me, I think it's quite nice to have the variation, especially when you've got such a good um, base to work from. So all I'm doing is I'm just coming in. And if you want spots to be darker, then obviously do them darker. And again, I'm just going in, I'm just covering all this. So I'm going to start off with the rust at the top. And I'm going to do all the vines in the moss effect. So there we go. So we're just going through that. I'm always told I'm working, I always work too fast. <laughs> so again, you know, take your time. This will be available on YouTube as well. So let's just create, let's do a little bit more here. There we go. So I'm going to darken this up a little bit more here. So we have got quite a lot of that down there. And I'm going to do this bottom bit, but I'm not going to do the right at the bottom just to show you the different techniques I can create at the bottom. And then I can always go in and change that if I need to. That's the beauty of working with these uh, mixed media products is, is they're so forgiving. Okay, so for me, that is, that's good enough for me to, to create this effect that I'm looking to create. So, I haven't given it full coverage. I know if Pip was doing it, she'd say, no, no, you need full coverage. So, there we go. So, that's quite simple. Just show you that. There you go. So, it's not all covered. It's bits of it covered. Now, if you were doing this and you obviously taking your time, you could cover all of that. So I'm going to give that a quick blast with the heat gun. It's very quick drying.
Okay, so all I've done is given that a quick blast. Okay, the next thing is, is I'm going to start off, like I mentioned, with the rust effect. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to put little bits of these paints into my little tray. So not a lot. You don't need a lot. You can always add, and I'll show you how much I've put in just to show you. Um, so all the different colours that you've got in the in the, the rust effect. So can I just start showing you some of these and then you'll know exactly what I'm doing. I'm running out of my colours because I've been using them so much. I've been saying no, to Pip. Grab you some more. No, I'm good. I think I will manage. I'll just take off a little bit of the brown out of the bottle. But can I just show you? That's the sort of level. That is all I'm using. I'm going to actually use this one, I think. But thank you. This is like variation. Hmm. But um, oh, good idea. So Pip's given me a little spatula because we've still got lots in it, but it's just the end of it now. So what I'm going to do is scrape that. And the the Pentart have put these together, and the beauty of this is, is that we can then actually build these colours up. And then don't forget, you've got your 3D pen as well, um, which we will be using, and I'll show you how to use that as well. So the way I start is, I start off with sort of just taking a little bit of the brown to start me off. Then I dip the same brush into the next colour of brown and start to build that up. And now you can you can go straight in and do that. Ryan's got an octopus this bit. So, and then what I do is I take a little bit of the yellow and build that in. Now you can start to dry this between them. So let me just show you this at the top. And you can start to lift as well. So if you feel that you've got oh too much of that colour or you've got too much of something, all I say to you is is just take a little bit of your uh, kitchen roll um, and start to lift a little bit out and then again that will give you a little bit of an effect okay so this is what I'm doing so it's it's not difficult but it's just a matter of keep going in keep building that up and you'll see it come together and when you first start you think mm, it's not really working for me it's too orange it's too yellow or it's too this so you just have to keep working at it to build that really beautiful sort of rust effect that you're looking for. So at the moment, I'm going to just dry that off so we can add a different colours to that. So we've got sort of an orangey colour going on there. And this is where you bring... Now this is where I've used a lot more, this is just to show the rust effect. So can you see that already? That's already looking more rusty than it was when we started. So that's what it's all about. Now the one that I've done on the example, I've blended all the three different products together. So what you've got is a slightly different effect, but what I want to show you today is all the different effects that you can create um, on this. So we're going to take a little bit of these colours, I'm going to blend them in a little bit more. And I'm just going to keep building until I'm happy with the colours I've actually got. Okay, so you just keep building on this. And what I'm going to start to do is I'm going to throw some of that 3D rust at this as well. 3D rust? 3D powder at this as well. So that you can see. And then what I'm going to do is... There we go. Now what you could do is, and I did see this being done on something else, is you could also do like a, an embossing powder as well, or the mineral powders that um, Pentart do. So there's lots of different things that you could actually do. Now I love, now this is going to create that next level for us. So let's take some of that brown and let's bring that in. And this creates that really lovely texture for us you make it look so easy <laughs> it is easy you just have to take your time if you make a mistake go over it with black that's my answer to it you're going like really fast and you make it look easy no now, so if you want to keep it like that rusty effect then this is a really good way to do it and then you can keep bringing that in and sometimes when it's wet it doesn't look that rusty so that's when you start to to think, oh, I've not done this quite right. So always, um, always dry it. 
Okay, so let's just show you how that's looking now. Can I get you to just um, show them these again? Yeah. Um, what kits you're working with, just okay. to give them um, an idea. Yeah. So, so I know have... a few of you have asked. Um, yeah. Uh, the rust effect is the first kit I'm using. And it's got five. Five, yeah, components to it. So the five it's got, and I'll just show you these from here as well, is uh, what, we, what we have is we have five components. They come in this beautiful box. And basically what you do is, what I do, and everybody's different, is I just build up with these four colours and then I add the 3D powder to add the actual texture to it, which is what I've been doing on this top bit. So let me just show you this top bit so that you can see. Okay, so now you can see how rusty that's already starting to look. It looks really old. And again, by changing the colour tones, you can make it look more older, newer, um, less rusty so again it's really up to you how you want to create that now the second set i'm going to be using is the patina set um the patina set comes in these i absolutely love this uh the patina set comes into these um beautiful beautiful blue sort of ray of color with this beautiful gold metallic which gives it that sort of vintage effect so again you've got these five colors here that you're going to work with and they come again in this beautiful kit so they're already done for you so i'm just all i'm doing is teaching you how to use how i use them obviously there's lots of different ways if you add different textures underneath you'll create different things if you add different colors you'll get create different effects so those are those five and then it takes the guesswork out doesn't it? it does take the guesswork out as pip <laughs> says i love out. using them yeah. and then i've got these beautiful beautiful moss effects <laughs> Which I absolutely adore. I can actually give you something that will show them the patina and rust effect. Oh, okay. Um, where your, because your bird cage is going to be more rust effect. Yeah. And this has got more of the patina effect. That's brilliant. So you can show that. And so then... that is something that Pip's already made um, using the rust and the patina. And you can just see how beautiful that is. So using the same techniques as I've used. But obviously concentrating them on the front of a book cover um, and then sort of blending those in. So there's lots of different ways. And as I mentioned to you, there's some textures behind that that create that beautiful. I love this book. Just look Thank at that. Thank you. It's so beautiful. <laughs> and this is using those two sets. That's it. That's and some gold wax, isn't it? Yeah, and gold wax. Oh, there's another wax in there. I see a magenta wax. wax. I was going to say, I see a magenta wax. So can you see oh. that? how beautiful that is so that's what we're trying to create thank you um, using the rust effects but on different products we want to create a different effect so on a birdcage you want it to look old as if it's been out there all the time so that's what we're doing so i'm just going to carry on building just up to here with the rust effects so can you see how easy that is and so it's just it's very very random and a lot of times we're asked you know how did you do that or how did you create that but once you get it all together you can see that depending on how you're doing it how you want to create those effects you can just keep coming in adding darkness adding lightness and creating those effects so i want a little bit more yellow in here so there we go and again you've got these beautiful beautiful effects of this scrumptious scrumptious as they say so here we go so i'm gonna i'm probably gonna leave that bit just to show you how that works and again we can come back into that and add, add some of the blues into it to make it more vertigo 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 there we go so again can you see that now how easy that was and that's created that beautiful I mean, it does feel like it actually would come off on my hand and look brown. Seriously, it really does feel like that from here. 
Okay, so the next thing is, just going to quickly rinse my brush out. And I'm going to start on the, I'm going to start doing a little bit of the blues now. So again, same technique, take your paints, put them onto the tray. So just squeeze those. They come in a really lovely little uh, pots for you so they're easy to use. The lids even come off so that if you want to scrape the last bits off like I always do, then you can do so. So just putting those on. These are really, really, and again, I tend to start with the dark and then build up. Um, I find that that's the easiest way for me to work. Everybody is different. Um, and again, you can come in and out and you can continue to do that. So let me just show you. So we've got those, uh, and we've got a little bit of gold going on there. Uh, I love the gold. There we go, it's a beautiful, beautiful gold. So I've got one more. So you've got your five colors again, and all I've done is I've just put them onto a bit of, of a plate, or you could use your craft mat, or a little bit of parchment paper, it really doesn't matter. Let me just show you how much I've got. I mean, remember how much I put in for my rust and look how far I got with that. So let me just show you. So what I've got here is just very little dots of the paints. So again, we're gonna go in. I've got a little bit of brown on my brush, but I'm not really worried about that. <gasps> uh, it would be. Uh, so what I'm gonna start doing is, is I'm gonna start building the patina into the middle of my bird cage so that you can have a look at how this works as well. So again, take a little bit of the colours, start blending them in. If you feel it's too rich, you can always knock these back. So all I'm doing is again using two colours, building it up. It's not it really is really easy to do. Um, and I know we all, you know, and again, you can bring some of that into making the rust a little bit more vertigray. And you can see, I don't know if that, I can't, I never know how to pronounce that word. But it sort of adds that vintage sort of feel to it now. Can you see how I've brought a bit of that blue in? Because I had a little bit extra. And now already we've changed the top of the, the cage to add a little bit more texture to it. I'll show you that in a minute when I pick that up and show you the detail that's already bringing together. And all I'm doing is I'm just going through randomly, not thinking about, don't overthink it. I think a lot of us overthink it. So can I, you see how that's changed already? I think you're talking about me. I think I'm talking about Pip. So there you go. So you can see how that's already blended all of that in. And every time you do this, we're going to get different effects. So now I'm just going to take in a little bit of the blue. And again, not too much. And then you're just going to start to get this beautiful sort of patina effect. Um, and then you've got this really lovely sort of light colour that's going to come in as well. And you know, you can just keep building this up. You can come in again with your rust effects on this. You can come in again with your different effects. I'm going to give his little little birdie a little bluey effect too as well. I think all the talents in that brush. That yeah. off brush. <laughs> I say I think this is right. Pep's got a point here. Let's give him a little bit of gold on his little side as well. Paul is convinced the top is an octopus. It is, isn't it? It does keep look saying like it. It, is an like, it is. It looks like an octopus. So I know Pip's working on some SeaWorld stuff, so maybe she could incorporate some of these techniques into it. I think so. I'm looking at that and I'm thinking, hmm. So can you see now how easily it is just to keep changing that frame? And each time you do it, it'll be different. So each time you start to build this, it'll look different. And again, you can. the nice thing about this paint set is, if you have this, or if you're thinking of it, is they work so well together. Oh, yeah, where you've got them blended look absolutely fantastic. Thank you. 
So all we're doing is we're just coming in and we're taking that in. And I'm going to continue, I'm going to come back to these. I'm just going to continue just doing this and then I will come back. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to start to bring some of that beautiful um, moss effect in. And what I'm going to do that with and is... Then again, those are, you have like a dark green, light green. Yeah, again, dark. we've got those three effect colours. And then that luscious powder. Um, and the luscious powder. Sorry, forgot about my little luscious powder. So what I'm going to do is, I'm in fact, rather than using a spatula, I'm actually going to use this this lovely uh, stick that I have. Are you sure? I can get you a spatula. I think this no. will this will be a. Oh, I, I could yeah. use a spatula. <laughs> okay. I don't want to ruin it. I don't want to be in trouble. No, no, no. Use that. Use that. If you're yeah. okay with that. Yeah. Please. I think it creates a really nice texture for me. I've got more control over it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with the dark. Now, I don't, it's really hard to show you the effect of this. Seriously, it is like moss. Can you see how the fibres stand up? Just like a moss effect. I feel like eating it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in on all my branches and I'm going to start adding that. And again, this is another effect that we can create. So all I'm doing is I want this to be a really raised effect. I'm just doing it on my branches, okay? So there we go. Nowhere else. I don't want. I don't mind it being anywhere else. So don't worry about it if it does. But what I'm doing is I'm just creating Ooh, this. Looks like mint chutney. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> it smells. It actually smells. Do you know? I can't tell you, but it does actually smell mossy. But I don't know if that's just all in my head. <laughs> just making it up as I'm going along. So now, can you see already how, oh, I just think it's scrumptious. I just want to eat it. I don't think that's the idea. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to just actually, rather than waste any of it, scrape in this. And again, you can come back, let it dry, come back. I think I can show you how I'm doing this. So, and there you go. And I just love this effect. How are we doing, oh, Pip? Have gorgeous. We got... It's just absolutely fantastic. So. You don't need to ask me how you're doing. You're always doing good. Oh, thank you. So, so you can see how we're building this up. And I just, now I'm going to go in with the dark colour, but don't tell Pip I use the same selection, okay? So, again, go in. Now this will take a little bit of time to dry, obviously. And then you see how we get capturing all those colours. Now if you want this to be a little bit lighter branch down here, then you can have a little bit of it. I just love it. And I love this with the rust and the, uh, the patina effect. For some reason, I just think this is the, probably one of the best combinations. Can you show, <laughs> Dali's like, you keep bugging me. Yeah. Can you just show the labels of your moss effects? Yeah, of course I can. Um, I don't know what's easy to do. That one is dark. That is, a, I'll tell you, it's a dark green, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, let me see. Let us, let's read this. This is called, oh, I can't even tell you. Um, Mass Effect Dark Green. Oh yeah, it says in big letters, dark green. Sorry, that's dark green. Then we've got this beautiful... I love that colour. Mass uh, Effect Light, light green. green. Oh god, this is so talented. Seriously, this is this is special. And then we've got grass. Then we've got... Oh, look at the grass. Look at the grass. It's very vibrant, the grass. Mm -hmm. But the grass is great. If you're into garden scenes, you're into flowers, then you have to have this one, I think, to get the um, even more effect to give it that um, moldy kind, not moldy, mossy <laughs> kind of fibrous look. Is yeah. fibrous a word? It is probably. I know what she's talking about. It's it's, it's a family thing, really. We're just uh, so talented. We use these. We make up words. So this is the fibers that um, Pip's talking about. This is called velvet. Now, if you wanted to. I know uh, Elizabeth Craft Designs do this beautiful tape and if you use the tape to do your uh, die cutting um, you could use the velvet effect to create velvet die cuts and it would be amazing. So here we go. So can you, uh, this is a really hard one to see when you're putting it on but you know what the effect it creates is absolutely lovely and again on the sort of grass greens and Oh, I just, I can't explain to you how much I love these effects. <laughs> I'm just like so excited. Do you feel like taking your uh, flip flops off and one? You got like big 
woolly boots on. I've got my slippers on still, yeah. so if anybody wants to know. Do you feel like taking know. those off and running through the grass all yesterday? Yeah. Oh, we've been watering our grass. It's been looking a little bit yellow. <laughs> I think it needs fertiliser. My mum's got green fingers. I think I pretend to have green fingers. <laughs> so I just play with moss effect. So. so I don't know if you can see that, but can you see the height in that already? Okay. So is that, could you see the height in that? Yeah. Yeah, you can. It's like they're, they're just like popping up. And that is what you can create with this. And I just absolutely love it. The light so, text on me. Yeah, the light text. Oh, is he? Mm -hmm. oh, that, that man, seriously. I think he needs to um, think of something else, like beer or something. So what I'm going to do is, actually, I'm going to oh. keep these colours out a little bit. So I'm going to take my brush. And I'm even going to use some of the moss effect to come back and add just a tiny weeny bit, not too much. It's a little bit more texture to my framework. So if you find you've added a little bit too much, like I have here, all you need to do is just take your... Uh, I don't know what Pip's up to today. I think she just wants to distract me. Um, she's, I think she's cursing Paul at this point. <laughs> I honestly oh, do think. This man, I tell you. Is he sort of, he's light deprived. He says that we Paul could do with some more. obsession with lights. We've decided. Is that better? Is that better, Paul? Are you happy? Where did it go, Daddy, so it doesn't glow? It's just here, I think. To turn it that way, maybe. That's it, that's fine. <laughs> I'm going to be in so much trouble because he's going to say, why didn't you put that on in the first place? <laughs> So what we're doing is, is we're going to bring that in. We're going to bring in because I've gone and done too much. <laughs> You're welcome, there. Paul. <laughs> and so we're just building that up. I want it all to blend. I don't want it all to be sticking out on its own, or or just to think, oh gosh, somebody's just added that in, or something like that. So let's carry on with a little bit of this. So can you see how all of these three are working together? So. You're okay, though, Yep, this is all good. So I'm going to start to to build in a bit more of my uh, rust effects back in again, so that we can build all of this up, and then you'll see how well this all works together. Just, I'm just so excited. I don't know why I'm so excited. Now we've got lights. Oh gosh. <laughs> lights, camera, action. Yeah. So we're really doing a great job here. I think of uh, playing really so i hope you're all enjoying it i hope you like what i'm trying to do i hope it's given you some inspiration for today so let's get some brown out so what i want to do is, is i want to go in with a little bit more brown because i want to break up some of this blue here so there we go so it's all about adding so i think a little bit of orange maybe back in here so it's about the blending of these all and each time you do this you're going to see something totally different so you can keep going like this all day like i would do so you can keep kicking and thinking oh no i want a bit more blue there oh no i want a bit more yellow there you know again you get these really really lovely sort of rustic effects and again you can add your 3bd powder at any stage to any of these effects so if you want to add a little bit more in here you can do that and what i do is i tend to add it and then i tend to go over the top of it with a color so i tend to do that because then i like that that effect it creates especially the rustic sort of effect it creates so there we go so can you see how that's already building up? Oh, that moss effect is scrumptious. It is. It's lovely. It's one of my favourites. <laughs> well, I say that about everything I do, though, don't I? It's, oh, that's one of my favourites. So again, we can start to build up the, the the cage as well. So if you feel that you know, you're know you losing something and you want to come back in with another colour, that is the beauty of these, that I can actually keep coming back in keep adding to it each time if you feel it's getting a bit smudged in then what you need to be doing is is drying the layers in between because that's one of the um, problems you get if you don't dry the layers 
And what you're going to do is you're just going to blend it so that this bit here, we need to dry this now. And so well, as you can see, we're just coming in. I don't know how we're doing for time. We're doing brilliant for time. It's only 10.34. Okay, so we'll keep going with this and keep showing you how to keep building. And I'll show you some of the, the bits that I've done right at the end as well, just to show you how this is going to look. So can you see how that's already building up? So I'm going to go with, with a little bit of this here. And if you feel you've put too much of some colour, don't worry, you can go back in and blend away. So again, you know, we've got a bit too much yellow here. So this is the way to fix that. Now, why are you laughing? Because as you keep going through the products and doing different things, I keep getting different requests. And, and so you're doing really, really well. People are <laughs> loving it. I'm getting loads of comments. Keeping me busy, keeping me on my toes. That's good. Keeps her on her toes, keeps her out of trouble. That's always a good sign. So, you know, if you want to bring a bit of gold in, just a little bit. I think the gold is so rich that if you want to bring it in, it's really nice to bring in. But just be careful that you don't overdo the gold. Um, so what I tend to do is, is I just pick spots that I want to put it rather than... And it is just like doing a little dance with your paints, I've decided. And everybody always says to me, how do you know? You just know. When you see it, you'll know that it's it's finished. It's not the, it's it's just one of those things. Now, why are you laughing? She keeps laughing. I don't know which is whether she's laughing at me. <laughs> so can you see how we're building all that up? I'm not laughing at you. Oh, good. That makes a change. So here we go with a little bit more worse coming in. You know, I mentioned. I'll blame it on Paul. No, not Paul again. So. <laughs> I just love this effect. So I think if anybody, you know, wants to get an effect, they're into flower making, gardening, then it's really, really lovely. This is just such a lovely way to do it. So let me add a little bit. I want to add a little bit of white highlighting here. I'm used to using the light. So the thing with these are that you can use these paints. They don't have to be used as a patina. They don't even have to be used the way I'm using them. So I'm going to sort of have like a little bit of a feathery effect on my little bird. So there we go. And again, you can build in on top of these, you can start to build in the colours. So you don't have to keep it. So I just feel like I need a little bit more lightness up here. Because it just felt a little bit dark to me. And can you see how that's all bl blending in together now? Let's have a little bit more white. So it's just a matter of just keep working at it and working at it and working at it. And then once you, you know you've got to a certain st stage, you'll know when you've done it right. Okay, so let's go in a little bit more brown here. Break that down. There are no rights and wrongs. And you you know that beautiful book that Pip made, um, which I absolutely love, I have to say, um, is a really nice way to use these products. So let's put a little bit of brown onto the edges of the bird as well. So I just love what you can create, just using a few colours really. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit more blue into here as well because I quite like so we've got like little bits here and there that we can bring in and I guess the moss effect is raised as well uh, Gally for those yeah. that have joined uh, yeah. you've left the bottom blank yes a little bit at the bottom why is that could you please explain so yeah I've left the bottom I've left the bottom blank a little bit purely mm -hmm. because I want to show you if you don't paint it black the effect that you'll get so it will be slightly different. So I just want to show you that. So let me just go in and do a little bit more on this for you. So I just love, I don't know why I love it. And you could sand this 
as well. So you could get a little bit more. Now, if you want to have a little bit more texture on your work, what I do is I take a little bit of the moss effect. I tend to like the do like this mid color as well. Just love this color really. And then what I can do is I can come in and I can add take a little bit extra than that. And I'm making a uh, and then I can start to add a little bit more onto other bits as well. And again, you get this is all about creating this effect. So as you can see, you've got this really beautiful. I don't know if you can see that, but you can see the bird. Let me hold it for a bit. Can you see all that texture? And then you can come in, you know, and do other effects as well. So that's that's where I'm gonna leave it for there for now, just to show you that for that bit. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what a difference it makes to do it at the bottom. So if you were looking at doing, let me wash my brush, which I seem to have battered to death. There we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just show you very quickly the patina at the bottom. So if you want that really light effect, then this is an effect that you could actually go for. So paint everything white, and maybe that's what I'll do next time, show you. Once, I know a lot of you have purchased this today. So what happens is you get a totally different look. So can you see that those same paints on a white, totally different. Cindy said it looks beautiful. Thank you, Cindy. So can you see that's a totally different look? So if you're looking to make something a bit more vibrant, then you can go with this, with it not being painted black. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build on this and say if this is a you know look you want to go for, but I actually like it darker, so I'm just going to bring in darker colours to finish the project. But I do really wanted to show you that it is um, it is such a difference when you do it like that. So I'm going to come in now with a little bit of darker colour. So you can, if you start off like that, you could build it back. So just a little bit. So you know you don't have to build it back loads. You could just leave it like that. Oh, you could have left the octopus that colour too. Just imagine the blue and the... Yeah, and so you could have done that yeah. that way and then done the top bit that way. I don't, I'm not going to yeah. change it now, by the way. But, um, <laughs> yeah, if, she, if that's what she thinks, it's not happening. Um, so all I'm doing now is I'm just going to bring in a bit more of that beautiful mustard. So I really think if you have anything in your stash, this is a really nice set of products to have. There we go. So I'm going to blend that in to just to show you how easy it is to re-blend in. I'll show you that first. So what I want to show you is this is the difference. Now I don't know if you can get that, but can you see where I left it white? It's got much more of a pop of a colour. It nearly looks like it's got something like a, an algae or something on it. So again, if you leave it white underneath, those are the different effects that you can get. So that just shows you by doing a different colour, a different combination, you get totally different effects. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in and just... I've got brown on my brush. Oh my goodness, Dali. I can't believe you've done that in less than 40 minutes. There we go, you see? I wish I was just as fast. You are. You just have to. You just have to keep going at it and keep going at it, and then you'll get there. But it's just. It's a, seriously. It's a matter of paint. Now, if you didn't like this, just paint over it. Seriously, that's what I would do. If you don't like it, just paint over it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just adding. I feel like I need a little bit more rust on there at the bottom. So I'm just taking a very tiny bit of my two colours because it's a bit. It doesn't have enough rust for me just at that bottom bit there we go now you'll see straight away that it's made such a difference all I've done is added some brown and I've added the orangey tan color and again that's given us just enough to cover that bottom bit let me just dry that and I'll show you that very quickly Now this is just by using one small piece, well it's not small actually, can you see that, look how lovely that is now, 
I love that effect. Oh, I'm in the wrong bit. Hmm. You can see all the texture there. So the next thing I did was I Gloria felt like says the white looks good. Oh, thank you. So the next thing I did was I started off by doing some flowers because I felt that the flowers would add a little bit more to this. I'll just show you with one flower um, because I think I'm going to put just one flower over here. So what I did with the flower, so they're just inexpensive flowers. I know again, Pip has these, um, but they're really lovely. They've got a metal wire, which I absolutely love. And what I tend to do with the metal wire is I tend to twirl it around a paintbrush and then I just pull it through. Ooh, would help if I was on camera. And that really gives a really nice effect as well if you want to do that. Now, the way I do these, again, is exactly the same. I go in with the brush and I just make them the colours I want them to be. That's good. So you can see, you so you've got a little bit of, I'm going to add a little bit of orange to that. I'll probably add a little bit of blue to that. And so I just want it to blend in. I don't want it to. Now you can have them standing out a little bit more. So if you want them to stand out a little bit more, you can. Again, that's down to how you want to do it. Okay. So you can see how I'm doing that. And I'm just going to add. So it's just white paper flowers then? Just white, white paper flowers. So nothing too special. Now you could die cut these. Um, you could have, a, if you've got a die, you could do this. You could create your own. So there's just so many ways of doing this. Um, so let me just put that in. So I really like this sort of, it's got a bit of pop of colour, but not too much. And then what I can do is now, I can just stick that, and I'll show you that in a minute. I'm just going to take, in fact, I'm going to use the wire on this occasion, then I don't have to put the heat gun on, just to show you how that can work on there. There we go. So, it just shows you that I've got this really lovely little flower. Now you could add more, you could add less, you don't need to add it. But that just gives you a bit of an idea. But can you see where I'm going with this now, hopefully? She loves your flower. So it's really simple, thank you. And it's not oh, difficult, oh, that's but that's where we can go with it. Then the next thing we do is, what I like to do is, I like to come in with a white highlighter, highlighter, white splashes I should say, um, and what I do is I just use the white primer and what this will do, now you can use a fan brush, you can use whatever you've got, if you've got a toothbrush you can use it and all I do with that is, is I take some white primer, make sure, and I just take my brush, put that in, so you don't need a lot. Oh, looks lovely, I yeah. cannot believe that and went you from a plain wooden I know you should Boring. have you got the wooden bit? Yeah. We'll have to have a look. Just, can you just pass that water spray for me, sweetheart? The, the, just a water spray so that I don't because my water's black. The, so make sure you use clean water. And then just add that because obviously this is a bit of a paste. So and what I'm gonna do now is very gently. Now I don't know if you can see this because I can see it. I have to show you. Now where I added that texture powder, can you see that? Can you see how that's really created this rust effect? And I absolutely love that. And I can see that. And can you see all that fibre from those moss effect? Right, did you want to show it? Um, yeah. Okay, so all I'm doing is I'm just going to come in with some splashes. I mean, I would highlight this. I would do, do some other things with it. But I'm just going to show you just so that you get an idea of where I'm going to. But you can do it after if you want. Yeah, I'll show that just... Uh, so all we're doing is... Uh, oh, that definitely highlights it. Yeah, so you can come in... I was just saying where you've got the, um, just I've got more on my computer than I have actually on my artwork. Um, <laughs> I should cover that for you. Um, okay, we'll have to wipe that in a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Me... I think I've ruined it before yeah, I've actually done it. ruined it before I've had a chance to cover it. So this is a really nice way, and I will wipe all this in a minute. It's a good job, it's only water-based primer. So, so not too much, but just enough for you to get. I think I've got more on my face as well. I've got my clothes. <laughs> Seriously, I just don't need to be left to lose with a fan brush and some. Now, let me show you that. So that makes such a difference, just that little bit added. So hopefully that's given you some inspiration today for all of you watching. We'll take some photographs and I'll show you the one. You can do the pegs in the same way. Let's say I've done the pegs. I'll show you what it started off like. 
Shall I hold them up together? Yeah, maybe I'll come and put your little camera screen up and monitor it. Oh, Dali, that's just lovely. Yeah, maybe I should push it up now because I have, I'm not going to add any more at this moment. Let me say hello to everybody who hasn't seen me today. Hello, everybody. <laughs> hello. So, we started off like this. And do you want to hold the other one up? Because yeah, I can hold the that. other one. I'm not tripping over wires here. I don't know what she's doing today. And here's what we finished today. So you can see that there's texture in there. You can see the rust effect, the patinas, the moss effect on the, the actual flower bit. I um, love the highlighting of your bird. Look at that highlighting. Yeah, so that's just using the patina, the rust and everything. Oh, look at that moss effect. Can you look at that texture? Yeah. Can you see, you yeah, can see it, you can right? see it. Look at that texture. And my favorite bit is actually this bit here, just because I actually really love the way the texture powder, uh, the, the 3D powder, oh, and yeah, the, the, the effect, it. it really gives you that rusty it effect. It does. It looks like it's been underwater for a long time. Long time. Wow. Like, Dali, you just blow me away from this to this, all within 45 minutes yeah. now. And then you can do the pegs, because the pegs come with the bird kit, yeah. don't they? Yeah. So anybody who didn't see us at the beginning. Yeah. They the come pegs. with pegs. And you can put the and these pegs are my on. pegs. And then you can obviously... Um, Add, add little lovely sentiments to it, maybe make oh, memo and flowers and the yeah. flowers. And I've done one flower for you to show you. So, you, so you've got a lot of inspiration, hopefully got a lot of inspiration for my little bird cage. And the great thing is, I mean, when you get these products, you can use yeah. them on anything. It doesn't matter whether you use it on cardstock. I've, uh, I've book, used it so much on cardstock, somewhere. haven't I? I do have, have a book somewhere. somewhere. Uh, you can use it on cardstock, you can um, use it on acetate, you can use it on plastic, you can use it on metal, um, I use it on canvases a lot. I mean, you can use them on anything, basically. <laughs> Actually, we've got an anchor that we're working on right now um, with all kinds of seashells. Is that one I showed um, earlier? Yeah, this is one you showed earlier. This is also Patina and Rest Effect um, in action from a book that I did. Um, you see it right there with the crackle, pent out crackle paste. And then we have this one also, yeah. which is more exactly the same colors, but we went more um, rust effect on it, didn't I? Yeah. But same kind of concept. So, so you've got all these like three yeah. totally different. And huge pots too, right? Yeah. They last you forever. Yeah, they're all 100 mils. Um, the um, moss effects they last you for ages. And um, so what you can get is all these different effects so don't think of it oh i can only do this no um you know you can create so much i mean just imagine creating a garden for all your flowers it would be absolutely it, beautiful it is and we had a question earlier um from gloria thank you we love your questions we had a question about can you use it on metal yes i've used it on metal i can actually i know i had said to you um i had used that my book so if you look right here these embellishments are actually all metal um, the key is metal over here. So yes, you can use the effects on metal. Also, um, a great idea for us, especially as in Canada, uh, our like equivalent of pound shop, you get these gorgeous metal planters. Yes. Just imagine doing the moss effect on those or even the terracotta ones. I mean, it's just absolutely yeah. scrumptious. Well done. Oh, thank I know, you. it's so smooth today. I, I told Di it was because we didn't have a gin and tonic this morning. That's oh, why you're right. able to get out here on time. Um, you see, you kept asking me why I'm laughing, right? <laughs> um, next week. Yeah, For those of you um, who might have missed this morning when we first came on, we are going to be doing um, different ways of using the Pentart um, media alcohol inks and you can see the shine on these so a bunch of different techniques that we're going to show you uh, using one color using die cuts and how you can get two different looks shiny and bright and matted using the exact same colors dali's trying to get attention here got it all over me. and just different techniques now um i'm what i'm gonna do is, is um, and I know Paul's going to do this next week because I've already talked to him oh. um, after the Facebook Live, I think. But yeah. for me, because I know I've got a bunch of uh, deliveries that will probably go out this week, we're still waiting on that parcel. It is now in Cincinnati. The last That's what we heard. It's in Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. um, so much. Yeah, <laughs> wherever that is in the mm -hmm. US somewhere. Um, 
so I'm going to do, um, prior to next week, do the alcohol links. So you get, if you buy five, I'm going to throw in one free. And I always suggest a rainbow because a rainbow is absolutely stunning because it gives that iridescent effect in any color. So you don't really need a pearlized alcohol link or an iridescent alcohol link. Um, you can get any color alcohol ink uh, that Pentart does and there's 62 different colors. And if you put the rainbow on it, it actually pearlizes it or glitterizes it, whatever mm, you want to do, yeah. it makes it iridescent. So, um, yeah, can't wait to share these techniques with you next week. Um, but, yeah, that yeah, was it. <laughs> I'm just yes. so glad we got here at 10 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> we're just too excited, can you tell? So, yeah, so um, we're also waiting for, in that package, we'll be getting the camera kit and i will oh, be demoing yeah. the camera kit not next week but the week after yeah. uh, from elizabeth craft designs to um show you using some digital papers yeah i can't um, wait this so camera excited. kit by Al's, oh my goodness from elizabeth craft designs is oh it's just so cute and i've seen people actually make little journal yeah. out of them and little photo things Definitely. so it's a camera kit has so many elements to it it's a die die cut set right it is, it is. and um yeah we just can't wait to share, share that it. with you so Dali got first dibs on it, yes. um, so she's going to be teaching you how to do that. Yes. But maybe I'll come up with a version of my own and just post pictures for inspiration. Yeah. And we've been designing. We've just designed. She designed two some new books. books. I already got to work with it, but I can't show it because it's yeah. So <laughs> we've got a couple secret. of new pads coming out. Yeah. Um. So keep watching, and we'll be sharing those with you and showing you some beautiful projects with them. Yeah. So um, Paul's going to be busy, I think. Gluing. Yeah, Paul, gluing. Gluing. Might have to send dad. Yeah, we have, <laughs> we'll have to send dad. dad. We'll keep Dali, you can have dad. Yeah. <laughs> so, Alrighty. but all is good. But yeah. stay safe, stay well, and we will see you very, very soon. So, okay. see you next Tuesday. Thanks, everybody, for joining. Keep sending your questions and any techniques you want to see. Um, I think this, this was just so fabulous. I'm just going to yeah. do one more close up because in real life, it's just it's unbelievable. But look at that. Look at how rusty and scrumptious that looks. Thank you. Look at Dali. Look at it. Look at your handiwork. That bird is so well highlighted. Oh. There you have it. Thank so, you, everybody. Another two, version. Two birdies. And they all came from this one here. So we have the square um, kits. And we also have the rounded one, if you have a preference, if you would like these. And that's it. That's I all think for we're today. over and we're out. Going to get some breakfast. Go to get some brekkie. Uh, not Saturday, no pancakes. So it's just going to be regular breakfast. Yeah. Our mum's probably made us tea. Actually. Yes. <laughs> She's probably waiting for us. Okay, everybody. Bye. -bye. Uh, thank you for joining us. And we will see you next Tuesday. Same time, same place. Okay. Bye. 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 Got paint all over me. You got paint on you. <laughs>